everybody and welcome. <clears throat> I have spent the last two weeks on a kind of deep dive into Robin Ford. I've learned a lot of stuff and uh, listened to some interviews and, and it's been really, really great and I wanted to share it with you guys. The way this song happened, I was looking at something he was teaching on YouTube and I learned it and the riff was so cool, I just started writing a song. So I created, created some new B sections and came up with this song. And before we start, I want to show you the clip, <laughs> or a small clip of this lesson he has on YouTube, on his YouTube channel of, of him teaching this riff. So let's take a look at that and, uh, yeah, take a look at this clip. We're going to call it a 24 bar blues form, which it is. So, that was two bars, right? We do that four times. So that's on his YouTube channel. And there's a lot of YouTube Robin Ford videos, but most of them at this point are not on his channel. So there's a link below to his YouTube channel where all of his personal stuff is. Also, there are links below to his guitar dojo, which is his learning platform on his website. So go to that. And also below are the links for Truefire Robin Ford lessons, which uh, I learned from also. So check out those three links and, and support Robin Ford. It's so amazing what he does. So this riff, it's really cool because in the body of the song, this song, and I'll show you this when I play, you can do so many interesting things. You can play minor, you can play major, you can go outside, which he is really, really adept at. You can play a diminished scale, which he's also really, really adept at. So this, this allowed me to kind of go on a, a stylistic journey to try and kind of learn from him and maybe perhaps emulate him in a small way. You never can. I mean, it's just such a virtuoso. So this, I'm going to play along with this song and talk about it. But the, the first I want to tell you something, the two interviews that I found that are really great, which, which you should also seek out, are one, one with Rick Beato and one with Craig Garber from Everyone Loves Guitar. And in the Rick Beato interview, he says something that he feels very strongly about, and I can tell he's being polite. He likes musicians who create a conversation, uh, which means that you're pl basically playing something, something simple and memorable, improvising in a conversational way, and then maybe you show bursts of virtuosity and speed, but he, he really likes musicians who play in a conversational way, and, and I do too. I mean, speed and virtuosity are amazing, but I like to see bursts of them, and I like to see them in service of a musical conversation. So when you said that, it really resonated with me. So let me play and talk about this. Here we go. So that's my melody, and it's very simple because the actual riff is kind of complex. So, you know, it's, it's great to play something simple over this. We'll go to A major. A minor blues. Now, E minor blues. And I can do some speed here. <laughs> A little bit of repetition. Now back to the melody. With a different tail on it, up the octave. I'm trying to play it very gentle, too, on the A major. We can go major, minor. Bridge pick up. Pick up this cool chord. Chromatic. That could be major ninth or minor ninth. Now a hook.
play blues in the first position. So much you can do here. What I didn't really demonstrate there that I'm going to do next, and th this is something he's very, very adept at. He is able to play outside and inside kind of in a very fluid fashion to where you almost don't know it's happening. And if I could define outside, it's like not using the scale or the key or the mode you're supposed to use. It's kind of, you know, breaking the rules and playing some notes outside the scale. And I'm going to show you another clip of him playing in Italy. This, this is on his channel also, his, his YouTube channel. And it's one of those great gigs in Italy where, you know, it, it's outdoors at night. There's the crowd, there's the buildings, there's the trees, there's the sky. I love these when they pan the camera away from the stage. But you can see a couple of things. This, I think, is in May. And you can see that he's playing better than ever. And his ability to play inside and outside is, is amazing. So check out this clip and then we'll talk about it. So now I'm going to demonstrate how I would play outside on this song. And then I want to show you a couple of things I learned from Robin Ford from his lessons in the last two weeks. And then we'll move on to questions and answers uh, about Robin or about anything. But I just wanted to spend the first part of this showing you, you know, this what I've learned from this amazing deep dive into Robin Ford over the last two weeks. So I'm going to try and play outside for a second. And the key for me when you play outside is to land on the inside. So you play something outside, just make sure you land on a chord tone on a, or on a very traditional riff. I'm going to do that. I'll show you. Okay, you see what I did? I just, I just played out of the key. And then I made sure I confidently landed on something on the inside. So that's one way of doing it. If you, if you break the rules, just obey them when you land and it'll, it'll sound really musical and fun. One thing I learned from him in one of his lessons, he says, if you can do this, then you can do this. And to me, that was a beautiful and practical dissonance. Now I'm going to show you an alternate melody on this song using that theory. So in passing, as long as you're on the way to somewhere, you can kind of break these rules. You can do these beautiful dissonances. This is a flat nine. And you work it into something. And then what I did is I answered it with a very traditional do, re, mi kind of on the second and fourth phrases. So that's one way to handle it. I also learned a diminished riff from him. Now this one, I got to go up the neck on this one. So wish me luck. Let's try it. So that works great too, as long as you end in the proper way. He's very, very adept at doing diminished scales. And one other thing I learned from him is when he, he calls them altered chords and altered scales, which they are. And he's, he's very good at using the diminished scale on the five chord. <laughs> And then also what he calls a half diminished whole tone scale. Let me see if we can get that one. 
which is great. And you can also do the same thing if you're just looking at melodic minor, minor one step up. So that's in the, in the True Fire lesson that I saw. And that's really valuable to me because I always wondered how to play through a chord like this and a chord like this. And in one five minute lesson, he showed me how to do both. And I wish, I wish I'd seen that lesson about 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So anyway, let me play one more time and we'll move on. Uh, oh, and also there's a, a sale on the masterclass. There's a special offer on the masterclass. If you click the link for that below, uh, you can take the free trial. And um, so I encourage you to do that. And you can always opt out if it's not right for you, but uh, it's just for this weekend, a special offer. So let me play one more time. We'll talk a little more about Robin and then we'll open, the, open it up for questions. I worked a long time trying to find something that wasn't just a blues lick on the turnaround, and I came up with this. And I do it in both octaves. And then the tail end of it can actually be kind of improvised and invented. So just a little bit about the history of Robin Ford. I guess his dad was a really good musician, so that helps. But uh, I mean, he's a, he's he loves the blues and he combines jazz with blues. And but I think his his main influence, early influence, was Mike Bloomfield. So check out Mike, Mike Bloomfield. And then he played with some amazing people early in his career: Joni Mitchell, uh, George Harrison, Tom Scott, and the L.A. Express. Uh, I know I'm going to forget a couple uh, on this list. I, I, he, I think he kind of started the Yellow Jackets. Pretty amazing. And then. The big one, he toured with Miles Davis, which for any musician is like, you know, the, the, the most amazing <laughs> crown you can wear. And then after that, he started his solo career in, in earnest. And I really, not only do I love the way he writes songs, I like the way he sings too. And there's a Dylan thing, a Bob Dylan thing that he does when he sings that I really like. And he really works hard on his lyrics. So you should, you know, pay attention to the lyrics too. I, I know he has a new record coming out. And the Dylan thing, I, I did 30 songs live off the floor in April and May with Bob Dylan. So I got to work with him up close. We were all sitting in a circle. And and so I'm kind of a, a Dylan fan. And I can hear Dylan in in his singing and his lyrical approach. And uh, that's, that's, that's a really good thing. Um, he's really serious about songwriting. So Actually, guys, I'm kind of ready for some questions. Yeah, let's let's have a look here. That last riff is all Tim Pierce. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You can, I mean, you 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 can borrow from people. You can try as hard as you can to emulate people, but really, you can only be yourself. And and but boy, if you can take two to five percent and and import somebody's genius into your playing from time to time, nothing better. Thanks. I, you, you, Angus, you're saying you like my compositional approach to soloing. Uh, that's where I come from. And, and the older I get and the more I do this, that's, that's what I like to hear. I like to hear players who play simply and then show bursts of complexity and show bursts of virtuosity. Uh, and so, uh, you know, being a blues player and showing a burst of jazz, that works perfectly for me. That's right. Charles Musselwhite, when he's not even 18. Thank you for filling the blanks. I, I've read all this stuff, and thank you for uh, reminding me. Yeah, great, great, great stuff. Yeah, so let me play a little more, and while I play, I'm going to look at the questions, and I'll, I'll bust out when I, when I see one.
So the juggernaut asks the question, uh, have you ever laid something out like that in the studio only in the studio only to have the artist say hate it? Dude, that's the job. That happens so much of the time. They're often more polite than that. It's more like, uh, what else you got? You know, so absolutely, that's the job. That's why a lot of uh, players can't really be studio musicians because they get your feelings hurt. I've said this before, but you have to let your ego be obliterated and then you have to bring your ego back 100% immediately afterwards. And that happens dozens of times when you're working on something. Because literally, you can play your heart out. You can play the most heartfelt, emotional thing you can think of. And they'll go, yeah, what else? And, and it happens. It's just... It's, 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 that's one of the hardest parts of the job. So anyway, remember, there is a special offer on the masterclass, so click that link below if you want to check it out. Oh yeah, yeah, Robin's rhythm chops and chords in, in the blues are very inspiring. Just the way his hands grab chords, it's like fine wine. I mean, it's, it's, there's so much to emulate and learn just in watching the way his left hand touches the guitar and his right hand too it's like a butterfly and the pocket i mean i can't say enough good about it i want to thank you guys for uh for joining me today and thanks for all your support i'm going to turn the delay off um and i'm going to play along with robin's track called tangle with you and uh it's a really cool track i'm going to play rhythm for a second and we'll we'll sign off but Definitely uh, click the link for the, the special offer in the master class and definitely check out all Robin Ford's links and support him. But uh, here's, here's Tangle with you. And, and thank you all so much for joining the live stream. I'm, I'm going to keep doing this. It's the funnest, most exciting thing I do. And I really appreciate all of you immensely. So here we go.